Hey gang, before we go any further today, let me tell you about one of my other favorite marketing podcasts. I think you're really going to enjoy. Believe it or not, it's a fun and funny podcast about email marketing. It's called The Email Marketing Show. They recently did an amazing episode called Six Lies Your Email Marketing Platform is Telling You, which I loved because these guys are so genuine and real in their opinions about what's working and what doesn't in email marketing today. You should definitely check them out by finding The Email Marketing Show wherever you get your podcasts or at emailmarketingheroes.com. On this episode of Winfluence. There is a place for the celebrity gamer when it comes down to viewership. And it comes down to straight performance. A lot of times, those can be a little hit or hit and miss. You can all go the very opposite route. One of the original arguments about the potency and, and how well the micro influencer does is because you know the people that are following those super small influencers truly are interested in what they have to say. But the reality of that is in order to reach an audience that's large enough, you'd have to sign a thousand influencers to a program. So our thought has always been the, the sweet spot is finding the, that middle ground. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. We learned on a recent episode of Winfluence that we're all gamers. If you play Wordle or 2048 or Solitaire on your phone, well, you're a gamer. When you think of the label that way and filter that label through the lens of influence and influencers, a stereotype is shattered a bit, right? Gaming is a $250 billion industry. The demographic of a gamer isn't what you think. The demographic of the gaming audience isn't what you think either. One of the things about gaming I personally have had a hard time with is understanding why anyone would want to sit around and watch other people play games. But millions do. Whether they're watching to learn game tips and secrets to get better or just watching to be entertained, millions and millions of people do just that. Because there's an audience there, there are influencers. Some play their games for others to watch. Twitch has been built largely on the backs of these types of folks. But others create how-to videos and instruction and entertainment around games. Still others are creating content about the products and services around gaming, like controllers and peripherals. Games are also now teaching people about the metaverse, since virtual reality is second nature to them. Video games have offered VR options for years now. There are all kinds of reasons to look to gamers as part of your influence marketing strategy, even if you're not a tech or gaming product company. Jordan Mariello is the managing partner at More Yellow, a branded content and gaming influencer management firm. He not only has a roster of gamers who create great content, but a team that helps brands navigate partnerships and creative content ideas to leverage relationships with gamers. I took another step in my own efforts to educate myself on the gaming segment of our industry with a great chat with Jordan. He opened my eyes to even more nuances of gaming, partnering with gamers, brand success there, and beyond. I'm sure you'll learn more as well today on Winfluence. Speaking of learning more, if you haven't downloaded the State of Content Management from Storyblock, get that report while the getting is good. It is a free report. It is available to help you see how businesses just like yours are managing the content mess. Creating it, distributing it, and the like. Storyblock is a headless content management system and a new sponsor and supporter of this program via the Marketing Podcast Network. The report is a very useful survey of 515 businesses in the U.S. and Europe, companies just like yours, and how they are approaching content distribution through their digital channels in 2022. I promise you're going to get some interesting insights and inspiration for your content management plans. That's the State of Content Management Report from Storyblock. Just go to storyblock.com slash winfluence for your free report. And Storyblock is without the C. It's S-T-O-R-Y-B-L-O-K. Storyblock.com slash winfluence. Go get that report. It's mighty handy. Might even inspire you to improve how you manage all the content you need to. Storyblock.com slash winfluence. Gamers and gaming influencers are some of the most effective influencers out there. We're going to find out more about how brands can partner with them. 
Jordan Mariello of More Yellow is next on Winfluence. Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, you look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. So I'm still trying to get my head wrapped around gaming and gamers, Jordan. We've uh, we've dispelled some myths recently here on the show. We've also established that even I am a gamer. I play games on my phone and such, but I'm not a hardcore video game player with you know a big audience on Twitch and things like that. When someone asks you to describe the typical gaming influencer, how do you describe that individual? Yeah, it's a it's a good question for sure. Um, it's really changed so much in like the last ten years, in particular. Uh, there's been you know the stereotype that you know most gamers are uh, the guys that are sitting uh, with their headsets on, drinking Red Bull. Yeah, you know, in their uh, mom's basement, and that's your gamer. That's that's the person that you're that you're uh, usually talking to in these programs. But it it's really changed. It's changed so much. Um, it's it's a very diverse uh, landscape. The gaming landscape is now so so. It's actually about split now from uh, male to female. Uh, there's about fifty five percent male. There's forty five percent women uh, playing games. You have games that are core games, you know, playing on the PC, um, MMO style games uh, that are competitive, um, you know, League of Legends, um, which is very much like uh, a big esports style game. Uh, then you have like console games, which are like big theatrical le- releases, you know, like huge movies that are put out. Um, and those are super fun to play. Um, and that's a totally different audience. And then, and then you have, you know, mobile games, you have puzzles and you have, um, you know, uh, little challenging games, um, trivia uh, that are dominated by by women players. Um, so you wait, wait, you, you say you saying women are smarter than us. <laughs> yeah, in a lot of, yes. <laughs> I'll say it. Um, a good, good form. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it, it's it's very interesting um, because when we work with a typical brand and we work with, you know, endemic brands and non-endemic brands, um, you can really focus and really target, um, you can really target to a certain individual, uh, with the types of games, uh, or gaming influencers that you end up working with. So, yeah, I, I guess long story short, it's a very diverse audience, uh, spans many ages, uh, from, you know, really young, uh, the average gaming age now, I, I believe is 34 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, the average gamer is 34, uh, owns a house and has a kid. Uh, it switches, you know, it lends itself to be a much older audience than what we probably would stereotype it as as well. So, um, yeah, every, everybody games. I think, I think the stat is that, um, three quarters of us households, uh, own a device that they play games on. That's pretty crazy. So these, when you're talking about influencers in the gaming world, um, you know, I'm going to assume here and and correct me if I'm wrong. We're going to talk about influential gamers, the ones that attract audiences online to, I guess, watch them play games. Um, Or are there other facets and intricacies to the content they create? Like is a gamer going to have, let's say, a lot a Twitch feed stream where people watch them play, but then they also create other content? Or are we talking about basically a spectator sport? Yeah, great question, too. Many uh, different types as well. Um, so you have some gamers, you would say maybe um, probably they, they stay off camera. They'll play, they'll play games. They'll use uh, some sort of audio system to do voiceover Mm -hmm. and they'll strictly just play. Um, and they'll make VOD content straight from there. VOD content is a video on demand. So that's more like what you, um, watch on YouTube. Um, and so, and then you have gamers that, that stream content. So that's like live, 
uh, where they broadcast on, say, like, let's say Twitch. Um, and Twitch is like a live broadcasting platform uh, for gamers, the main one, the biggest. YouTube gaming is right behind it. Um, and so they'll be playing and it'll be pretty much gameplay that you see. And then a lot of times there'll be like, like picture in a picture and you can see them, uh, overlaid on, on the game. Uh, so they're on camera. So there, you know, you have people that are very much, it's very much about the game, watching the game, um, how, the, how the person plays it, how they explore the game. Um, uh, but then you have, you know, a little bit more like creator oriented, um, influencers where say like. We have um, a guy that we manage, his name, uh, he goes by Yub, and he uh, he creates content that is just in front of the camera, uh, funny content, does skits, does music videos, and then he plays games in his, in his uh, actual videos. Um, one of his big things um, is he plays uh, Skate 3, which is like a really cool skating game. Okay. And then he'll go out and he'll actually play, um, he'll actually try those tricks in real life on his skateboard. You know, and then so he'll build an audience and, and his audience and his following is like so much more interested in, say, like um, the satire and um, mm-hmm. how fun it is to watch him and because he's a character, you know, he's just a character. And, and so there's a lot of people like that as well. So there's no um, there's no specific exact type of gamer influencer. They, you know, they really kind of yeah. um, are really diverse as well. It sounds to me like, I mean, if I'm if I'm sitting here kind of doing a strategy uh, for for one of my clients, which my clients don't necessarily dabble into the gaming space as of yet, but if I'm sitting down there, I'm thinking, okay, there's three or four different types of influencers in the gaming world. So there's players, people who play games, and you watch. There are I, probably it sounds like people who are creating entertaining content for the gaming audience, you know, like your, your, your guy there with the skate videos and, and the satire. Um, and then I would say there's probably influencers that create content for gamers specifically, you know, whether it's reviews or of products or games, and whatnot, does that sound about right? Are there three or four different divisions of kind of the types of content creators there are? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I think with, you know, little nuances here and there, like, you know, you have like on YouTube where they create, let's say that bod content. Um, you also have like, usually that lends itself to be a little bit more longer format. Um, so then if you run over to like, say the TikToks and the Instagrams, you know, it's still bod content, but it's now very much short form, right. Done in like 30 seconds to, you know, a couple minutes um, at most. So then you have, you know, short form and long form, of those variations. Um, and then you also have, you know, people that put out, um, you know, news and reviews and then, so it's a little bit more educational and informational. So you get, um, you know, you get variances, I guess, everywhere. Sure. Along the way. But that's the beauty of, uh, and sorry, I'll just, i just sum it up really quick. That's the beauty of these platforms, uh, YouTube in particular, uh, it's the second largest search engine on the internet behind Google and obviously Google owns YouTube, but they, you know, you can really search and drill down in your search to find the exact types of content you really want to find, um, which helps you with like kind of all the nuances and the, the variations of, of what the influencers are putting out. So I know uh, more yellow, your firm it has a, a big roster of uh, gamers and influential gamers you work with. You, you mentioned, you know, the world of gaming is very diverse and, and that applies in a lot of different ways, gender, race, background, et cetera. But I want to talk about the diversity in size. I'm sure there are big following gamers that might be considered celebrities within the space, but I'm guessing there's something to be said for the mid tier and upcoming creators too. Is that a sweet spot for brands, particularly those who are perhaps dipping a toe in the space for the first time? Maybe they don't have a full understanding of the budget or value proposition that a gamer might bring, but they know their audience is there and they want to kind of bridge that gap. Is that sort of mid-tier, you know, micro maybe influencer in the gaming space a good spot for folks to start with? You know, there's there's a time and a place for a lot of different types of gamers. You know, there is a place for the celebrity gamer where you like to put them onto a program uh, for their name, you know, um, for their credibility. 
you know, and people know that, you know, but when it comes down to viewership and it comes down to straight performance, um, a lot of times those can be a little hit, hit and miss, um, especially in branded content because branded content isn't authentic to their channel, right? It's a sponsorship. They're getting paid to do it. They have to disclose it. Everybody knows it even as, as well as they do. And, you know, the fact of the matter is sometimes that performs um, and it very much also cannot perform. Uh, and we've seen it so many times and your heart just sinks, you know, because you're just like, oh, my goodness, you spent an arm and a leg mm-hmm. um, to get the celebrity talent. And so um, you can all go the very opposite route. Um, you know, one of the original arguments about the um, the potency and, and how well the micro influencer does is because, you know, the people that are following those super small influencers truly are interested in what they have to say. Truly like everything they have to say, they're, they're hanging on those words. They wouldn't follow them. Otherwise it's, you know, a couple thousand people they're following them, not for a popular, a popularity. They're following them because they like what they have to say. But, but the reality of that is um, in order to reach, you know, an audience that's large enough uh, for your program, you'd have to sign a thousand influencers to a program, you know, which is really very difficult to do, you know, as far as getting, you know, sign offs, uh, briefing everybody, doing the contracts for everybody. Um, even if it was a hundred influencers in a program, it's, you know, a managerial uh, <laughs> catastrophe. It'd be difficult to do for sure. Um, so our thought has always been the, the sweet spot is finding the, that middle ground. Um, we think the mid tier influencers, it's very powerful, uh, for the brands to use them. Um, because you know, number one, you do have audiences that really are much closer, uh, to the influencer. They, they are there for, you know, their content, not just because they're super popular, Um, But the reach is there. You have reach, you know, 100 to 500,000 views per video, which is how we calculate um, the size of an influencer, not by not by their um, sub count, but very much by their view count. Um, And then it also gives you the ability um, with more traditional advertising tactics and traditional media buying tactics is always about targeting, right? Like, oh, I want to target this audience and this segment and this audience. And if you use micros, you can say like, let's use a program where we use 15 to 20 influencers in it. You know, we could split it up and do, you know, five influencers to um, one demo and then we can do five to another and we can kind of vary it up and and balance out the performance um, a lot better too. So it just gives you a little bit more control over the program. You get the reach that you need, um, and then, you know, I think also, also your, um, percentages of hitting and getting all of the viewership that you're paying for is much higher because, uh, most of the time it hits, you're kind of spreading it. You're diversifying your buy essentially. So let me talk about content a little bit, because when I think of, uh, you know, influence partnerships or sponsorships with gamers. And again, I have a very limited worldview there, so I'm probably wrong. But when I think about it, I think of kind of the stereotypical, you know, gamer, you know, we're watching this gamer play and they're wearing my shirt or they're wearing my cap or they're drinking my drink or they're whatever. And so it's it's very much a uh, product placement and or, you know, typical kind of commercial engagement. Um, but I know that More Yellow does more than manage the talent. You also create campaigns for and with the brands or creators. Let me start with this. Is it common in the gaming world for the gamer to actually create unique content themselves around the brand? Or do they need that creative direction from an agency like yours or the brand typically in order to make a, a really good partnership come to life? Yeah, that's a great question. The issue is, is, is yes. And gamers, they create content. That's how they built their channel. You could not put, build a channel without putting out good content. So they very much, you know, gaming influencers very much have the potential to create, you know, amazing content around, um, you know, a briefing uh, or say like a launch or product that's coming out. The issue is, um, you know, brands very much have particulars that they want to talk about. 
You know, they have certain things that they want to say. They have particular features they want to highlight. Um, you know, every time a new product comes out, there's little um, elements to that product that make it uh, different from the last product. And they want to talk about those things, right? Otherwise, why are they paying money to put out this new product? And so finding that balance is is key. And, you know, when influencer marketing was becoming a thing, um, I think us included, uh, we're probably guilty of um, over-briefing um, and over-stipulating all of the different w- ways that the influencer had to talk about the program. Um, and that gets you into trouble because, you know, the audience that they have very much is in tune with the types of content that they put out. And as soon as it varies, even a little bit, mm-hmm. they'll wait till the next video comes out to watch. And you can see that on view counts. When, when a video comes out that has been um, over-directed from a, a, sponsored, a sponsorship, uh, it, the performance almost always is likely to fail or underperform. And so... But, you know, as I was saying, you do have to give direction. So what what we like to do is very much have like a very loose briefing that the client or the brand uh, will buy off on. um, And we will then give that briefing to the talent. Uh, We very much vet the channels long before we just go to them with the client. So we show them like this is how they produce their content. You would expect something like this. You give them a very loose outline. Um, and then if they have any questions, we go back and forth. We mediate that with the, with the, with the client. And then we let them run from there, you know, unless, and, and as long as it's not super, super outside the box or anything that, you know, would get, you know, the brand in, in trouble. Um, we usually like to try and bring that back and, and present it to the brand. Is it safe to say that, that gaming influencers, brands who want to use them probably need to come to the table with um, a, a little bit of a dulled expectation of, of you know, crossing those T's and dotting those I's. They need to let go of their brand a little bit in order re- to really be successful. Yeah, it's, it's loosening the grip a little bit for sure. Um, it's definitely doing that. You know, I, I think – when a brand is looking at influencer marketing, um, they should really spend a lot of time on making sure they like the personality type of the talent, um, really like the way they do their content um, and see how they've grown their ch- channel uh, because they really should not over direct and try and get them to fit into the brand's box. Uh, but the brand should actually be trying to you know, fit into kind of how they normally do their content on their channel. So yes, loosening the grip, being flexible. Um, you know, if, as long as the key messaging is said correctly and, and, you know, things are said right, then let it go, let it run and, and let them make the call. Cause you know, they built their channel. Nobody knows it better than them. Nobody knows their audience better than them. Well, that makes a ton of sense. Unfortunately, I think if you've, you've eliminated 75% of all brands by saying you got to have that approach because they're still learning. They're still, they still want to, you know, have those grips uh, on the messaging, which I understand. I understand the, that from the brand perspective and putting your brand messaging and whatnot in the hands of, you know, a creator that you don't really know well, if you don't already have a relationship with them can be a little, a little nerve wracking. So I understand that. Well, I would say this, I would say a, an important thing is, you know, always give a CTA at the end. We always give a CTA. We're pushing people to download or to buy, but we're also pushing people to product pages. You want to learn more, go to this product page. And then that's that's the area where the brand now gets to dictate all of the individual texts and specs and and really kind of go to work on, you know, anything that they specifically want to say or show. Um, I think that's a great way to, to use um, talent is, you know, let them talk to their audience the way they do, direct their audience then to the brand's page and the brand's content. And then that's now it's the brand's turn, you know, to, to go on. And, and I think that that's a that's a nice that's a nice balance. We've got more with Jordan Moriello, including what kind of executions brands can expect with gamers. That's coming up on Winfluence.
Let's uh, let's put some reality, some brass tacks on this for some people, just so they can visualize all this a little bit. Let Let's say that you approach a brand, or or maybe a brand approaches you and says, "Hey, I want to engage you to find, you know, the right set of gaming influencers for my brand." And let's say we're talking about, um, let's go outside of the the typical gaming. Like I, I was going to say, a premium headphone. But let's go outside of that. Maybe it's a snack, like Pringles. Um, so they come to you and say, "I want to." create something awesome with some good gaming uh, uh, influencers. What kind of executions are you pitching to the influencers? What kind of, uh, what kind of, what kind of executions can Pringles expect in return? Where does that, where does that creative go? If it's just Pring, I'm Pringles. I want to uh, partner with gamers. What does that look like? I think the first thing that we think about is, you know, who, um, how, how do we want to put the content out? Uh, there's first like there's dedicated videos that we can put out on the influencers channels. And then there's integrations that we can put out. So are we going more for uh, kind of a long format and really kind of explaining what the new Pringles taste like um, and how they were made and et cetera, et cetera. Or are we going more for a plug? Is it, is it more just about letting everybody know that um, the new Pringles are out and where they can buy them? And, and it's as simple as that. Um, in integration, the shorter of the two dedicated video would be the whole video you're buying from them. And integration would be, um, you know, a much shorter segment. Now the integrations on regular scheduled content on an influencer's channel, those always perform, uh, much better than say a dedicated content just because it's, um, the typical story <laughs> that they usually put out. I don't, I don't, I don't follow them to learn about potato chips. You know, I get that. That, that makes yeah. sense to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, so we decipher, okay, is it going to be dedicated content? Is it going to be integrated content? And then based off of that, um, we then would look at, you know, what's going on in the gaming industry right now uh, as far as topics, new releases um, that are going to perform because, Essentially, the way the algorithms work on um, Twitch and YouTube primarily is they're going to highlight um, the most popular things at any particular time. Uh, if there's a release of, let's say, Call of Duty's coming out, the new Call of Duty's just just came out. Well, those channels, as people are putting out new content for those games, those channels are doing so well. Um, and you'll see it. Everybody that's playing Call of Duty right now since it came out is getting millions of views when typically they get hundreds of thousands of views, you know. And so we try and, and try and figure we work backwards. All right. Well, what are the channels that are going to get us the most viewership right now um, that work the best with this type of brand? And then do we want to do integrated content or dedicated content? And then from there, um, we'll build a list of all of the different talent that we'd like to work with. Um, we present that back to the brand. Um, and then, you know, going through the process very quickly here, once that's approved, we, uh, talk to all of the talent, uh, and present an outline of what we'd want to talk about. Um, we negotiate that until, uh, we lock it down and then we go to work on production. You said, you know, you make a list. I'm just curious. I mean, I, I work with influencer marketing tools, um, on a day to day basis, Taggers the sponsor of this program. I use them, of course, and they certainly index Twitch influencers. Is there a special set of places that you look to find gaming influencers, or are you looking at the popular YouTube channels, the popular Twitch channels, and and that's pretty much where you're focused? Yeah, great question. Um, kind of all of the above. Uh, first and foremost, so so more yellow. We have a roster of over 225. Uh, gaming talent. Um, that's the first place we go is, yeah. is, you know, our roster. We work with our talent um, on a weekly basis. So we are constantly in communication with them. Uh, we constantly are going back and forth. We constantly have meetings with them. Um, so that gives us like probably the strongest line to our talent. One of the things that if you were asked, you know, most brands, what their biggest pain points were in working with influencers is they lose contact or, you know, you, you can't get a hold of them and you can't the conversation stuff. Well, we have a direct line with all of our talent. So that's where we start. Um, and then from there, if we do want to um, develop a list that's off roster um, or if we want to go off roster to sort of accentuate our on roster talent for the program, or there's like a specific type of talent we want, 
Um, you know, for Twitch, we use a, a platform called Solely Gnome. Uh, you know, not not a bells and whistles platform, but great information, up to date with all of the the latest Twitch uh, talent. And then we'll also use Creator RQ, um, which is probably industry standard for for building lists. Um, and then we also, um, you know, we search YouTube who's performing best uh, with these types of programs or or a certain type of game or a certain type of info. Um, and then I'll be honest, if we do want to go outside of our roster, uh, which is vast and, and definitely varied, having been in the industry for so long, we will talk with other managers um, that are managing talent as well and just get their thoughts as to, hey, do you have anybody that'd be good for this program? And Heck yeah. So that's probably the hierarchy of priorities, um, us internally being the first and then doing the lists in the middle and then uh, last resort, talking to other managers sure. if there's a specific type of talent we're looking for. Yeah. Well, I, I have found, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I, I, I probably am remiss in not giving a nod to talent managers more frequently uh, than I do because especially for, I mean, I, I don't have a huge team at Cornet to, you know, kind of to, to do a lot of execution for me. So when I am struck, stuck with a, uh, a project that's on a deadline and I've got to find 10 influencers that do ABC, XYZ. I have a list of talent managers. I just shoot it out there and say, okay, here's what I'm looking for. Who do you got? And, uh, and they can be a real lifesaver if you make those connections. And that's not just in the gaming world. Certainly that's in, in other areas of influence as well. You know, you, you touched on this Jordan uh, a minute ago, and I just want to kind of follow up and kind of close the loop on it. Um, I'm wondering how do gamers differ from traditional like Instagrammers and YouTubers in terms of what analytics or value they can deliver? How do you explain it? Are we talking, you mentioned views earlier. Um, is that the primary thing? Is it really all about kind of the reach um, or are there other analytics, other metrics, depending upon what the brand is asking for that you're able to deliver to kind of underline that value? What's the promise? Well, views, views is very important. Views is probably one of the most important things because that's, you know, the awareness factor. Um, conversions is very big as well. You know, conversions. So, so linking out, um, getting people to download or play or getting people to buy or purchase that conversion and views. Um, one of the things that, you know, there's a constant um, conversation going on internally at Moriello is um, with live streamers, uh, you know, you don't get the same amount of viewership uh, in live as you would with the VOD content. Um, right. So live content, uh, we call it concurrent views. So how many people are viewing at any given time, the live? Um, and then so very much if we're selling streamers, um, you are selling concurrent views, uh, which is a much smaller number. But the conversation is if you see the streamer uh, during their stream – Say, hey, everybody, check this out or really quick jump over and, and take a look at this, this game or download this really quick while I play this. The conversion rate is astronomically higher. Yep. Uh, we've seen conversion rates up to like 70%. That's crazy. Of people jump over. <laughs> Whereas, you know, on VOD content, the conversion rate can be, you know, 5% is pretty great Yeah, on, uh, on VOD content. So it's completely different. Um and so uh, really for us, like, you know, a mix using some, some live broadcasters along with VOD content makers is really important. But the things that we look at are very much um, views, conversion, concurrent views um, on, the, on the streaming side, um, peak views, um, unique views. Um, those are people popping in, pop it off of the, of the live. And then on the uh, VOD side, it's views, engagement, um, sentiment. Um, and then there's some back-end metrics that YouTube will give you, um, audience retention um, and conversion. So, yeah, there's a few different things. Good stuff. Well, Jordan, this has been extremely helpful. Uh, thanks for taking us to school on influence partnerships in the gaming world. I feel smarter now. I, I'm not sure I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and dive into the gaming world, but uh, I feel at least smarter about it, which is good. Uh, where can people find you and more yellow online if they're looking for help with gaming partnerships? 
Yes, moreyellow.com. You can learn all about our services um, and what we do on the creator side as, as well as on the brand side. So as an agency, we very much um, we very much do strategy um, and come up with how do you approach it, how do you get your product out. Uh, we build, you know, straight from RFPs. We'll come up with overall concepts as to how to how to uh, launch a product. Um, and then so moreyellow.com, you can find us. Um, you know, our Twitter is at moreyellow. Um, and on LinkedIn, uh, More Yellow, we have a, a really good feed of content that we put out, uh, articles that we like, as well as um, different work that we have just finished. Excellent. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for the time, man. This has been great and uh, really appreciate the work you're doing out there. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You know, after all these years of rolling my eyes at the notion of gamers, I looked up the other day and caught myself scoring 3 billion points on my stupid little block game on my phone. Apparently, I played the game for six hours last week. Time to drink the Kool-Aid, I guess. Thank you to Jordan Moriello from More Yellow for taking the time with us. Find him at moreyellow.com. Folks, don't forget to drop a rating or review for us on your favorite podcast app. You should pause now and do it so you don't forget, unless you're driving, then do it later, please. Also, if you'd like a deep dive on influencer marketing topics every so often, subscribe to my email newsletter at jason.online slash subscribe. I send it every four to six weeks. I go deep on a topic to make your influence marketing smarter. I don't pepper your inbox, just write when I have something to say and something good to share. Want to help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome? Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Record a voice memo and send it via email. Or if you don't want to record yourself, just send a regular email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening. And remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPM you might enjoy as well. I'm Gordon Glenister and I'm the host of Influence, the global podcast that shines a spotlight on the influencer marketing industry. And each episode we talk to brand managers, agency strategists, influencer platforms, industry thought leaders and the influencers themselves about the latest trends and stories affecting the influencer marketing industry. And their stories will certainly inspire you. So just hop over to gordonglenister.com or search for Influence the Global Podcast wherever you normally get your podcast from. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.